Doggy You. Are you looking to add a new dog or puppy to your family but not sure where to start? In this video, we're going to go over the top five traits to look at before choosing your dog or puppy. Now, every dog is an individual that has their own quirks and personalities, but there are certain traits that tend to pop up in certain breeds more than others, which is why we have so many different breeds to choose from. There's more to choosing a dog than a cute face and a wiggly tail. So whether you're purchasing from a reputable breeder or going down to your local humane society to pick out a pup, consider these five traits before you choose your companion for the next 10 to 15 years. So let's start by just saying that all puppies are adorable. They're cute no matter what type of dog you got going on. And they are especially cute when they are fast asleep. But just because something is adorable doesn't mean that it's the right fit for your family. Here I am with a baby cassowary. Super cute when they're little, but when they get bigger, they can slash a three inch hole in a board. So probably not right for my household. Now, obviously we're not buying cassowaries, but you get the idea. So let's talk about the things we need to consider before deciding on bringing a puppy into our household for the next 10 to 20 years. Size. Size matters. Size matters for a variety of reasons. Do you travel a lot and want a dog that can come with you everywhere, even on a plane? Do you have small children and a little dog might be easily injured in your household? Do you enjoy hiking and need a dog that can travel long distances, but could also fit in a kayak on a paddle trip? There's also the cost consideration. Larger dogs tend to cost more, whether it be for spaying and neutering or the monthly cost of feeding a larger breed dog. They also may be harder to control for someone with more of a petite frame, though training can go a long way to solve that problem. What about your car? Will a larger dog fit? Do you want a dog that looks formidable because you often walk alone? The practicality of size needs to be taken into consideration when selecting the dog for you. Breed history. Breed history is arguably one of the most important things to take into consideration before deciding on a puppy or dog. All dogs were originally bred to serve some sort of function, and ignoring that can make for a serious mismatch between dog and owner. Some dogs were bred to hunt or pull sleds, others to tend livestock or guard it, while others still were bred to sit on your lap and be companions. You need to be sure you find a breed whose history matches what your goals and lifestyle look like. If you want a dog that will cuddle all night while you watch Netflix, a Border Collie is probably not the dog for you, unless you spent the rest of the day playing agility and running. Similarly, if your idea of a good time is hunting with your dog on the weekend, you shouldn't acquire a Chihuahua. Most dogs do best with a job to do, even if it wasn't the one they were originally bred for. Otherwise, things like undesirable breed behavior, such as nipping or herding, could come out and your Sheltie could be obsessively hurting your children, if not given appropriate outlets. Sighthounds are bred to chase game. If your goals include off-leash work, you need to know that quite a bit of training is going to have to go into your whippet to make them reliable around rabbits. Now, there are always exceptions to the rule lazy border collies and high-strung bulldogs exist, but at least knowing the history of the breed and what it was bred for is very helpful in making a breed decision. Temperament and Bitability Are you looking for goofy or serious? A dog who's a bit independent or a Velker dog that sticks to you everywhere you go? Looking for a dog that will guard the house and is a bit suspicious of strangers? Or a dog that has never met a stranger and greets everyone with kisses? Is dog sociability important to you? Or would you rather have a dog that keeps to themselves? Temperament is important, along with biddability. Biddability is a term used to talk about how willing a dog is to work with you and learn. All dogs are trainable, but some breeds are more interested in working with you than others. This often goes back to what they were originally bred for, whether it was to work with people and take direction, or think independently to hunt down a rat or solve a problem. Bitability isn't about smarts. It's about the dog's interest in working with you to figure out what you're asking. Many of the most biddable dogs are also the dogs that need the most mental stimulation and attention to make good house pets. Energy level. This one is very important. While energy level can vary within a breed, it's good to know how much exercise you will need to provide on a daily basis. Malinois will have different needs as far as mental and physical stimulation versus a dachshund. All dogs need exercise, but you should know if you're a walk around the block type of owner or a biking, kayaking, hiking, extreme sports kind of person who needs an extreme dog to match. My personal dogs need a couple of hours of exercise every day, rain or shine, but I knew that going into it. If you don't provide the exercise your dog needs, it can cause serious behavior problems. So giving your dog a job might become your full-time job if you don't take into consideration the energy level of the breed that you're interested in. Make sure that your personal energy level and lifestyle match that of the dog you are getting. Coat type and maintenance. 
I'm not big on spending a lot of time grooming. I want to be able to run a brush over my dog's coat once a week and be done with it. Therefore, I will never get an Afghan hound or a white dog for that matter. When looking into a dog, you need to know if it will need to be groomed on a regular basis, such as poodles and Portuguese water dogs. But if you don't like shedding, a breed with hair instead of fur might be right for you. Also consider how the coat might adapt to different weather conditions. If you're going to be outside a lot in the winter and you're getting a boxer, you may very well have to invest in a nice winter coat for them. Similarly, your Bernese Mountain Dog may not enjoy being outside in 95 degree weather in the summer. Just make sure you consider the financial and time investment you will need to make in keeping your dog's coat in good shape. So that's it. Those are the top five traits to consider before picking out your next doggy pal. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And remember, happy training!